Okay, are you guys ready to sort of march through this? All right, so I put the problem back up here in sort of condensed form. We have a 140 acre reservoir and 9,000 acre watershed. 18 inches of rain is gonna fall on both the watershed and the reservoir, foot and a half, over the next 180 days. At the same time, we're gonna lose a half a centimeter a day to evaporation off the reservoir. Of that 18 inches that falls on the 9,000 acre reservoir, 90% of that is gonna end up in the reservoir. Only 10% of it's gonna be lost. And we're assuming that the groundwater input or output is insignificant because of the granite rock that's surrounding the area. So what I didn't tell you to do, and I just sort of left it out there, is you want to use the hydrologic equation to sort of set this all up. Let's look at the inputs and outputs. So what's going to go into the reservoir in this? You don't have to quantify, but just tell me what water is going to end up in there. Okay, so it's raining, right? That's where the water is going to come from is the rain, right? So we really have two inputs into the reservoir. We have rain on the reservoir. Eighteen inches of it, right? So I'm just going to note that here. So 18 of inches of rain are going to fall on that reservoir. So if that was the only thing going on, that was the only thing going on, your water level would go up a foot and a half, right? You're putting a foot and a half of water on it. If there's nothing else going on, it's going to raise a foot and a half. But we have other things going on, right? We've got this big 9,000 acre watershed. It's raining on the watershed. It's going to rain 18 inches on the watershed. And 90% of that's going to run off. So we have runoff from the watershed. Ninety percent of eighteen inches falling on that nine thousand acre watershed. Okay. What's leaving the reservoir? Evaporation. Got evaporation. And we said that's half a centimeter per day. What else? We want it to stay at six feet, right? And my question to you is how much water has to be released to keep it at six feet? So the other thing that we have going on is we're going to manipulate the water level to keep it easily even because we're going to have some outflow. We're going to release some water. Okay, And that's what we ultimately want to calculate. Is how much water do we have to let go? You're the dam manager, remember? You've got water coming in, you've got some evaporation, you wanna keep it at six feet below the spillway. You know you have to release some water, but you gotta figure out how much. And you don't wanna just do it all in a millisecond because the people downstream are not gonna be happy if you release a whole ton of water all at one time and it floods their land. So you wanna do this over the same six month period, okay? So this is a real world, this is what dam managers would really do. This is a real problem. Okay, so remember our hydrologic equation. What was our hydrologic equation? It's simple, right? Input minus output equals a change in storage. What's our change in storage going to be from the beginning to the end of our reservoir? zero, right? It's going to stay at the same level. Okay, so since delta S equals zero, that means we have input minus output equals zero. That means our input should equal our output. Okay, I'm going to go over to the next page here. So our input minus our output equals zero. So our input equals our output. 
think I'll put out because zero <laughs> kind of looks like our O. Okay, so our input must equal our output. What's our input? Rain on the reservoir, right? What else is an input? Watershed, runoff. What's our output? Evaporation. Can we calculate that? It's half a centimeter per day, right? For 180 days. Could be 90 centimeters coming off of that 140 acre watershed. What don't we know? What we want to figure out is how much outflow. So basically what we have is the rain on the reservoir plus the watershed runoff. minus evaporation is going to equal our outflow. Okay, that's kind of the conceptual way we do this, right? We know how much is going into the reservoir. We know how much is coming off the reservoir. So we can ultimately calculate how much we have to let go. Okay. So we have three things that we have to quantify. The rain on the reservoir, the runoff, and the evaporation. So let's just walk through each of these, okay? So let's now solve for the outflow. So the first thing we have to do is calculate the volume of rain that falls on the reservoir. Okay, so what do we know about the amount of rain that falls on the reservoir itself? We know how big the reservoir is, right? How big is it? Okay, so the volume is going to be the area of the reservoir, which is 140 acres. times the depth of the rain, which is 18 inches, okay? So that's 140 acres times 18 inches. It's gonna be really helpful in this case to do everything in acre feet. It's one of the units I gave you a little earlier. How do we change this to acre feet? Well, we already have acres there, right? We don't have to mess with that. All we have to do is change 18 inches to feet. What's our conversion? 12 inches, 
one foot. And you should get 210 acre feet. That's the volume of water that lands on your reservoir from rainfall. 210, 18, 210 acre feet. Okay? It's a pretty simple calculation, right? Just take your acres times your depth. I gave it to you in inches, so change it to feet. One conversion. We have 210 acre feet. Okay. Second part is watershed runoff. So let's quantify runoff. So the volume of water that runs off is going to be what? Again, we're going to probably use acre feet here. How big's the reservoir, or how big's the watershed? 9,000 9, acres. How much water falls on it? 18 inches again. But it doesn't all go in, right? Only 90% of it. So you multiply it by 9 tenths, 0 0.9. So 9,000 acres times 18 inches times 90%. You wanted an acre feet, so you have to do one conversion. You have 12 inches over one foot. What'd you guys get for an answer? Twelve thousand one hundred and fifty acre feet. Okay, so we have the volume that's coming off the watershed. It's one of the inputs. We have the volume of rainfall that landed on the reservoir. That was the other input, right? So we got both of our inputs already quantified. What's our output? So we must quantify our evaporation, right? What do we know? It's coming off the reservoir, right? So volume equals area times your depth, or in this case, your amount lost every day. What's our area of our Hundred and forty acres. Now what do we know about the depth of precipitation that's lost? I gave you a rate, right? What was the rate? It was half a centimeter per day, right? How many days? So it's 180 days. Zero point five times 180 days cancel. That should give you 90 centimeters. So almost a meter of water was lost to evaporation over that time. Almost three feet.
Okay, so we have 140 acres times your 90 centimeters of evaporation. I want acre feet. I have acre centimeters. So I have to convert 2.54 centimeters per one inch and there's 12 inches in one foot and if you multiply that out you get 140 acres times 2.95 feet which should be about right it's almost a meter and that's going to equal I have 413 acre feet. We still have the same numbers up to this point? Not on the evaporation. What'd you get? Oh, I got uh, 22.966. I think I did that one wrong. 22.9. Where are you looking? For uh, amount lost. 20. Well, oh, so this right here, you ended up with how many acre feet? Uh, oh, yeah, only 22.966. Okay. not seeing exactly where you made your mistake, but you're still, you know, it's not, in the grand scheme of things, when we put this together, it's not going to be that much off, okay? So now we've quantified runoff, rainfall on the lake, and evaporation lost, right? So if we go back to our hydrologic equation, remember input minus output equals change in storage, change in storage in this case is zero so input is going to equal output our inputs are runoff and precip on the reservoir our outputs are evaporation and we're trying to figure out what we need to make as our outflow all right what was our runoff amount go back and look we had 12,150 acre feet of runoff right how many acre feet precipitation on our reservoir I had 210 acre feet equals our evaporation which was 400 and 13 acre feet plus our outflow which we want to figure out and so if you do all this you get well 50 acre feet plus 210 acre feet minus 413 acre feet it's going to equal our outflow so our outflow has to equal 11,947 acre feet Okay, so that's the total amount that's going to raise the water in your reservoir. 11,947 11, acre feet. So we got to get rid of that, right? That's how much we have to let go. So as a dam manager, you must release 
1,947 acre feet in 180 days. Okay, so the math for that is your outflow is going to be that volume, 11,947 acre feet, and you're going to divide that over a time period. That's how much you're going to release. So you're going to release that much over 180 days. I'm going to put this on the next page. Now I said I wanted it in cubic feet per second. So we're going to have to do some converting. Okay? And some of those acre foot conversions. I gotta put some days here, 180 days, sorry about that. Okay, so let's just do the math, do the conversion. I mean, right now, this is the right answer 11,947 11, acre feet per 180 days. That's what you wanna do, you wanna release that much water. Now we just want to figure out how much that is per second, because that's what you can do as a dam manager, is try to figure out how much do I have to let go every second. So let's just do some converting. There's a lot of ways you can do this. I'm going to start by getting rid of days and getting the seconds. Okay. So we know there's one day, 24 hours, one hour, and 60 minutes, one minute has 60 seconds. So if we start canceling, we end up with seconds. And if you just want to stop and check your math, I guess we can do that. When I calculated up to this point, I had 7.64 times 10 to the minus fourth. The units that we have right now are still acre feet, but now we have acre feet per second. So if you take 11,947, divide by 24, divide by 60, divide by 60, All right, ultimately, again, we want cubic feet per second, right? Well, if you look at it, we've got one of those feet right there. We want a feet squared in there, so what we have to do is we have to take acres and convert it to square feet. What do we know about conversions for acres? Give me one conversion you know for acre that might be useful. Okay, so we have 640 acres per one square mile. Better use MI. Can rewrite that. One mile squared. Okay. Can we get the feet from miles or feet squared from miles squared? This is one you should know. One mile, 
5280 feet but it's squared so we have to do this conversion twice and if you multiply this out I ended up with 33.46 cubic feet per second, which is a nice, reasonable little stream flow. If you went, like I said, if you went down to Poudre River today, that's about the stream flow you would get. All right, did you guys see how I did that? The math is really easy, right? The actual mathematics, the actual calculations are really simple. It's getting the problem set up. And that's where the hydrologic equation would help you. I'll give you another one of these next week to practice with. I'm going to ask you one final question, okay? Let's say you didn't let any water go. You're bad dam manager. All you did was drink beer, and you didn't pay attention to any of your data, and you just let the water pour in. Do you think it would have overtopped it? Do you think you'd overtop the dam? Prove it. Okay, so the question really is, how high would the water have risen if no water was released. So go back to your hydrologic equation. You have a change in storage now. So you've got water coming in, right? runoff and rainfall, and you have evaporation. But you don't have any outflow. And we already know you needed outflow to keep the water level the same, right? So now you have a change in storage. So re-manipulate that hydrologic equation and get rid of the outflow. And then see if you can figure out how high the water in the dam would rise.
Okay, remember you have this huge watershed, right? 9,000 acres. 90% of that's running off, right? Rain's a foot and a half deep, 9,000 acres. 90% of that's running off. It's a lot of water, right? And it's rushing into a really tiny reservoir, right? So you're going to expect the water level to go up a lot. How do you calculate it, though? That's the big question. Well, you've got, this is a volume, right? Right? That's a volume of water. 140 acres. What kind of unit is that? an area, right? Okay, and I want to know how high the water is going to go, right? That's a depth. Remember back one of the first equations I gave you is that volume equals area times depth. We want depth, right? Therefore, volume divided by the area equals the depth. If you look at the units, what's our volume of water? 11,947 acre feet. What's our area? It's 140 acres. What's really nice is the unit should work, right? Cancel out acres, what are we left with? Feet. And if you actually go through the math, you should get 85.34 feet. Would it have overtopped your dam? By a lot. So if you didn't release any water, the water would have slowly risen until it just overtopped your dam. At that point, that can damage your dam. Wipe away your dam. Let the dam fail. Let all that water rush downstream in one catastrophic event that kills people and you end up in prison for negligence. So do your math. Release your water. But anyway, if you struggle with this, go back through and sort of look at how the units work. Come back with questions next week provide another problem for you to sort of work through so that you start getting used to this. But if you look, if you go back and look at this, the actual mathematics are easy. You're just multiplying stuff. The hardest thing is sort of keeping in mind the big picture. What is the problem? What am I working towards? And keep remembering this too. Volume is an area times a depth. This unit acre feet that is a volume. Acres are an area, feet is depth. It's really easy with acre feet to solve for depths, things like that. So that's why we use it. So anyway, I'll give you a problem next week that you can play with and if you guys have any questions. Okay. If you have a quiz to take, you can stick around.